Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Kimberly Braun here. And she is a spiritual adventurer and an author. And we're going to learn more about her and what she does. So let's kick this off right. Tell us more about yourself. Thanks, Kyle. And first, it's really great to be with you. And I love the name of your podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have really been very passionate about the whole process of uh, awakening, about discovering what life is about, what my life is about, uh, what it means to be free, to be full of love. And I've been so passionate about it all my life that it's really informed all my decisions Everywhere I've gone, what I have done uh, has been oriented towards believing that if I can discover more about this process, then I will discover my greatest happiness. Yeah. So that that's it in a nutshell. And it's taken a lot of different forms. And when people learn my bullet points of my bio, oftentimes there's misperceptions around it. So when I was young, I started having a lot of mystical experiences that pulled back veils on life. Mm. Uh, it didn't exempt me from challenges, from loss, from suffering, from need for self-growth, but it did reveal to me that at our very center, there is a source. There's a, there's a pulsing life force. We could call it God. We could call it source. We could call it so many names and that the more I open up, the more we open up to that, the more we find ourselves actualizing our fullest potential. Mm. And I'm saying that kind of in business terms, but I mean that in, the, in a very soul-centered and a heart-centered way. And so eventually it led me into a lot of service. It led me into even deeper mystical experiences where I would find myself absorbed in a uh, prayer that led to miracles and visions and all sorts of phenomena and laying on of hands, healing and beautiful gifts, beautiful ways we can be friends to each other. And um, fired up by that, Kyle, I joined a monastery and was a monastic nun for 10 and a half years, which let me go very, very deep into all of these things I loved and I really wanted to grow in. And then in that process, unknown to me, about six years into my, my call as a monastic, I heard, I heard a call within a call, and it said, build the permanent monastery. Wow. And, and it's in Texas. It's in Texas. It's outside really? Angelo, yes. So I gave this massive yes to this, <laughs> but I didn't know that it was literal, that I was actually going to be the general contractor and one of the main fundraisers and designers. I, because I had, I was 29 years old. <laughs> I had no experience and I was a monastic nun, but you know, we give these yeses, we get these inspirations. And when we can really, really just surrender our need to know, we step into a uh, capacity to do things we never possibly imagined. And so uh, I had the amazing miracle of having that project flow through me and with hundreds of others and result in a 17,000 square foot mission style monastery wow. ending debt free worth millions of dollars. And and it, to me, is a symbol of what we're all called to. Like everybody has their monastery that they're called to build, whether it's building a life of compassion and love within your family, whatever the call might be. So, so I'm at the service of that. And I travel, people bring me in to speak. I lead retreats. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well but I travel much more. And, and as I said, I'm really blessed to come out with a third book, which is very exciting story. You didn't make it look like the Alamo, did you? you oh, there's a <laughs> funny story in the Alamo because we got permission to go down to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And now I loved Mission Espada and San Jose the best, but we went to the mall 
Well, we got called into the manager's office at the Alamo because I had this measuring tape that I was measuring everything and taking pictures of everything. Oh, and they no we pictures. Suspicious. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little more beautiful than the Alamo, but the Alamo is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they're they're very picky about that. No pictures at the Alamo. <laughs> well, we learned that by being pulled into the manager's office. And here I am in full habit as a monastic nun. <laughs> Wondering, like, am I getting arrested? Like, <laughs> What ex exactly do you do? Do you help people to get more on their spiritual side or are you helping them to be more successful? Uh, I mean, what exactly are you doing? It's, it's great. It, it's a great question because we do like to have clear definitions uh, and, and it's important. Now, as somebody that believes that we are most successful when we tap in to our own selves through spirituality, mm -hmm. my mechanisms are that. Uh, but I help people all from uh, coming into contact with themselves to creating a life that's balanced, focused, yeah. happy. Uh, and then I work, I help people even work through trauma. Uh, it happens. Like when we really open ourselves to source, the trauma that's within us that we're carrying in our body has a place to go. It has a place to release. So I've even helped people heal from panic attacks and anxiety and depression, which is just rampant today because of how challenging society is making life. Uh, so, so it's on the spectrum, but I would say that my, my, my operating fundamentals are that you have everything you need within you. And if you can access it, if you can discover ways to live from that place more consistently, you're going to find your, your relationships are more successful. Your business is more successful. You are having a higher quality of life and you are being fulfilled in answering what you may define as a call, but many people don't even identify with that word or how, you know, I don't like to tack that on there that you have to have this idea that I'm, I'm called because uh, that can be leading to despair if you can't discover your call. <laughs> <laughs> and you work in meditation? I do. I teach a lot of meditation and contemplative practice. I have an online course. I work one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the retreat I'm leading in February will be really opening up a lot of contemplative experience. So, and I help people find what works for them. Oftentimes, if you go to a tradition, you're going to get the fruit of what that tradition's practices are, but it may not work for you. You may not be somebody that can just do mindfulness. Yeah. You may not be somebody that uh, really opens up with sound, like with chanting, but there is a, something that works for your personality and your temperament. Do you have abilities? abilities yeah like are you a, a medium or or an empath um, or anything like that i do i have a lot of psychic abilities i've been an instrument of dramatic healing for people uh, I, i'm tapped into a lot of realms i would say my life is like i've never needed to do psychedelics my life's pretty psychedelic <laughs> it's like, you know, when people describe their experiences i'm like yeah i know exactly what you're talking about like, <laughs> it is um, I, my closest friends aren't even in form guides, angels, uh, sages, shamans. Uh, and I do do a lot of healing work like that. And I have done a lot of direct healing work where I will channel for people. Uh, I I've shape shifted into, uh, individuals that people were longing to see or hear, but it's interesting because I haven't found that. I've been called to develop just that branch of those gifts. They just naturally come in where it's helpful. Wow. So actual shape shifting? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I've, Isn't I've that never crazy? Seen, yeah. I've never yes. seen that. I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Oh. And I had, when I was 18, when I had a bilocation experience too. Uh, which was really incredible. And I, you know, unsolicited, I was lost in one of these really deep places of prayer. And in it, 
I, I became very on fire. And then there was, there was this doorway, but I wasn't walking through it. And then what happened is I was instantaneously with a young Chinese girl who was having a really difficult moment. And I was right where I was in Ohio, but I was also right where she was. And I was there to somehow console her and I consoled her, but she wasn't communicating. She didn't, she knew I was there and she, she rested into me, but she didn't confine in what she was suffering. So it was like just this spontaneous and that's happened with the shape shifting. I've shape shifted. One time I was doing a healing session for a woman who was distraught her. She had lost her mom, who was her best friend mm -hmm. three years prior or two years prior. And Kyle, she was so sad because all her friends had always been experiencing signs when they lost loved ones, you know, things showing up or our sense of presence or something. And she was getting nothing. And she was so sad because it was her best friend. So we did this healing session. And as I was, I was amidst the session, I, I had my, my right hand on her arm and my left hand on her shoulder and I don't need to go into the details of the session, but I, I knew energy was moving and that she was experiencing something. And I was experiencing her mom's presence. I had shapeshifted into her mom. And the words I was speaking were the words her mom wanted her to hear. And what she felt was her mother's hands on her physically. Wow. Isn't that so beautiful? Uh, are, are, is this like spiritually shape shifting or you're physically changing into something else? Well, it's, I, I don't know exactly. Cause I haven't explored it. I just know that like, sometimes I've run into people, they'll, I'll be having some kind of spiritual experience. And I know that I have shifted and changed and then people will look at me and they'll start crying because they will see only the presence I'm feeling. Right. So they won't see me. They will see the presence I'm feeling, but I'm still myself, but I'm still feeling interpenetrated by that presence. <clears throat> so how do I explore that? I haven't spent enough time looking into, uh, but I know the capacities there if I wanted to develop more and it would need to be at service of my ministry. Right. I, I, I'm not really interested in just developing it for the sake of Hey, I can shape shift. You know? Right, right. Yeah, to a tiger. <laughs> well, I know like the phenomenon of speaking in tongues where yeah. different people will hear the message in their own language. And I mean, it's possible and people don't understand. They think it's just somebody rolling their eyes in the back of their head and they're just putting out a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And they don't understand someone there can hear in their own language, what's being said. No, I, I've, it's I've, incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And it is so powerful. I know I've participated in that gift myself, both as somebody doing it and on the receiving end. And it is really remarkable. And to me, what it says is look how thin the veil is for us you know, that, that this kind of solid thing that we, we refer to as the us is, is really just an anchor point for a, a, a beingness that's just far beyond what we could even imagine. What we, we, I feel like we just like tipped the iceberg a little bit. <laughs> well, I have a friend who is a psychic medium and she does past life regressions and she, took me into a hypnotic state and actually were seeing what I perceived as to be my life back almost a hundred years ago. And it's, it's something that even if you don't believe in that kind of thing, I tell people you should try it because it is a relief. It's, it's, it's almost like you have been put into such a relaxed state that you you feel so relieved and relaxed when it's over with. I don't care if it's a trick, it, it, even yeah. if it is a trick, <laughs> it's, it's worth it. Yeah. 
I, I love, I love your disposition around those things, right? Because for me, when we try to describe what's real mm-hmm. or what's true, what's absolutely true, we don't really know. And I agree with you. When you try these things, there is some fruit that happens regardless of what your belief system is. Mm-hmm. And is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And even the fact that it wouldn't be narrowed and hemmed in by the limited way we look at ourselves and our world, that it actually operates by a more subtle, sublime principle itself is pretty remarkable. Well, I assume that you read my biography on Podmatch. You know, I'm a a, uh, a paranormal investigator, and I am the skeptic of the group. But I have seen stuff I cannot explain. I've, you know, and I'm usually the one to say, "Oh, I know what that is." It's you know, the reflection of this, blah blah blah. You know, I've got an explanation for almost everything. But sometimes I see things or experience things that I just cannot explain away. And I already hear people with the, oh, ghosts aren't real. And you're, you know, it's all just this, that, and the other. You have limited your belief system. Why don't you go on an investigation and and see if you experience something? You may not. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, but... Uh, 90% of the investigations I go on, I don't experience anything at all. But sometimes I capture things I can't explain. Yeah. And with these different techniques that I know people use, like the past life regression, you you may be missing out on something that uh, you could change your life. Right. 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 And And that's, Wow, you just said something just so powerful, right? I mean, we carry in ourselves so many concerns. Mm -hmm. There's so many concerns about safety, security, meaning, direction, um, what this life is even about, you know, what even happens when I'm going to die. Like, there, we carry so many really legitimate concerns. And I agree with you that opening ourselves at least to explore, even from a skeptical standpoint, because, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the most mystical people I have met have been people that are, are claim themselves to be atheists because I've discovered that as they're claiming that what they're saying, that the ones that I've met that feel very deeply mystical, they're saying no to what something isn't. They're like, I'm not going to buy that bill of goods. No. (laughs) <laughs> and they're just saying no, no, no. And from where I stand, if you have the ability to say no to something that's really limited, then there's something within you that is saying yes, that you're able to say that even. There's something in you that's stirring that's much deeper. So even a skeptical path. Now I'm I'm such a lover. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I'm like atypical that way. I could use a little more skepticism. In my life. <laughs> I always say the skeptics make our jobs harder, but that just means that I'm going to try even harder to prove what I'm trying to prove. Right. And then you have to unearth and, and discover new things, right? In order to to prove it to yourself or to prove it to them. Yeah, that's well, a really good point. At one point in history, people used to think the earth was flat. And look what happened. You know, we proved that it's round and they didn't believe that we could fly. And now we get from one end of the planet to the other in an airplane. You know, yeah. they didn't think we'd ever get to outer space. But, I mean, we've gone to the moon. Yeah. Oh, and that's because you don't want to limit your beliefs. Yeah. They're great examples. <laughs> exactly. They're great examples. Yeah. And, we, we, we have <clears throat> so many stories right before us, just like that. Right. And you said you have three books. I do. So this, this book miracles and the naked light, which is my third book that just came out. Mm-hmm. So that recounts the story of my building, that massive 17,000 square foot monastery with no money, no experience as a 29 year old monastic. So it's, it's filled with examples like that. You know, it takes you on the journey of, you just can't deny, I mean, something really powerful is happening, but 
even though this is my third book, it's the second in a trilogy. My first book came out years ago. It's called Love Calls. And I've, I've got a new cover, but here's a old cover because I'm working on editing it. And it plays out my own experience of, of love calling, what that means and is. But the book that came out in between then that you might appreciate is called this. It's called Beloved Found. And there are some of my poems. I write a lot of poetry. And there's some of my poems. And they have everything to do with what I call is the beloved. So every poem plays out some aspect of human experience in relation to the ineffable, you know, the, the finding, the loss, the ecstasy, the, the despair, everything. It's all in here in, in the form of poetry and longing. <laughs> I remember a story. It was a professor who was an atheist professor was in a discussion, I think it was with a student about whether God existed. And he says, well, if God really existed, then I could take this marble and I could drop it and it won't hit the ground. He says, okay. And as the professor goes to drop it, it accidentally bounced on the table. I say accidentally, but it bounced on the table yeah. and it ended up hitting his leg and it rolled down and it ended in the cuff or a, you know, a little indention in his pants and never hit the ground. And wow. it kind of stopped him for a moment. Think, right. I think I just disproved my <laughs> own theory. <here." laughs> I love that. And he was a little open to that. He right. Kind of put his own like, well, that's not what I meant. Kind of filter on it all. <laughs> uh, I can say that I have asked in prayer for certain things and i've received those things and i'm not saying I, I went and said oh god i need a new car and poof i walked outside and there's a new car but i've asked for guidance and gotten some dreams that got me the guidance that i was looking for but there were times in my life where i, I had a ministry and i needed to get out and to go talk to people and I had no vehicle and I'm like, what am I going to do? And someone just came up to me and without me even saying that I needed a vehicle, asked me if I wanted one. Like, I've, you know, right? I've, I know you don't have a car. Would you like to have mine? You know, right. Crazy, crazy. Things like that can happen. But there's so many folks that just they don't want to believe in anything outside of what's in front of their face. Yeah. It can, it can be scary because we have to let go of something. We have to let go of the, the, how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have to set ourselves up for disappointment. Like there's so many reasons I think that people, we as human beings get scared of, of trusting with that much audacity Mm -hmm. But I do believe <clears throat> I'm an Aries. So Aries in the astrological sign, we're like fire signs and we're like, bam, like we're like, we go for it. Um, I think one of the blessings I've been given is to jump into things. So early on when I encountered some of my fears, I jumped in. I thought, well, fear is not reality. I'm just going to jump right in the center of this and see what happens. And we don't all have to be that way. I mean, that that would kind of ruin the diversity that's beautiful about being a human being. Mm -hmm. But I do think there are ways, there are very practical ways that we can work with ourselves to help soften the fear so it's a little easier to just try. Yeah. Not to expect, right? But just try. Yeah. Just just like you did. And 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 then see the magic that's there that's ready to happen. There's so much of this life that we need to experience. And by limiting, you know, that belief, you're going to miss out. Yeah. If someone wants to get in contact with you or to get one of your books, do you have a website? Absolutely. Super easy. So if you're listening and you want to connect, then I would say that spirit stirring and I want to connect with you too. The connections are not random. Uh, KimberlyBraun.com, my name, Kimberly Braun, B-R-A-U-N.com. My books are there. 
I have an active YouTube channel, other ways you can connect with me. I have online courses and online community, and uh, you'll see a, a real banquet of options to be in touch. And you can just do the real simplest thing and join my newsletter, which I send out just one once a month with a fun, like our discussion where there's kind of a playful inquiry. And usually my, my articles and my newsletters are a little bit like that. Are you on social media? I am. I am on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And now doing YouTube shorts because my publisher said it would be a good idea. So I'm ambitiously <laughs> <laughs> working on posting on these on these realms. So connect with me and private message me if you really want to connect because I'm I'm still getting my sea legs and being a little more consistent. I feel like an absent lover on social media. It's like, I'm all into it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I just don't have time. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm not as engaging on social media as I should be. The, uh, you know, there's so much more in life that's I, I feel more important than just spending yes. time on social media. <laughs> but I am going to put all of your links in the description to make it easier thank for you. folks to find you. And Kimberly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it's been great being with you. Thank you for the wonderful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button. And for my regulars, you guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. And until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.